right, so are you ready for part two? I am. It's called the power of evil. The power of evil shall be broken. Now we're still here in chapter 55. And um, we made it down to verse 23. And I guess we're going to keep going. So, ready? Mm -hmm. right. 23. Until now, it has been... Until now, it has not been human love which has dominated the world. It has been, as it was from the beginning of mankind, human power which reigns and conquers. The one who has loved has become the victim of evil. Right. So, you see where it's saying that the one who has loved has become the victim of evil? See, this, that puts me in, that makes me think, you know, in the past... All you really had to do was be kind and be nice and be a person who was who was a loving person. And you didn't have to worry about, you know, a lot of the enemy's arrows, a lot of the, the, the uh, enemy's darts. But now even the ones who are trying to do good are becoming victims of this evil world. Evil is going after the good guy now, not just the bad guy. It's going after the good guys now. Yeah, I was listening to it, um, this chapter the other night, and it really made me stop and think when it said that um, love doesn't mm -hmm. dominate the world anymore, that um, power does. Yeah. And I started thinking about in today's society how power really does. If you don't have power, then I guess you're basically considered a nobody. Well, he who doesn't have power is despised. Yeah. Right, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, 24. Evil has extended its kingdom and has been strong on earth. And it is precisely in this time that I will bring my weapons to oppose these powers so that my kingdom of love and justice may be established among men. Right. So evil is reigning now. Evil has full dominance on, on the planet now. It's, it's infecting just about everything. But you remember that after the tribulation, we are expected not to have to deal with evil anymore. And that's what it's talking about here is how he says, in this time, I will bring my weapons to oppose these powers so that my kingdom of love and justice may be established among men. This kingdom of love and justice is what he's talking about is, you know, the post millennial age That's where we that's what we'll live at in a post millennial age. Twenty five. But before my kingdom is established, I will have to battle evil, for it, it is necessary that I wage war and destroy all evil to give you the peace of my spirit. Yeah, so he's planning on, at the end of this tribulation, all evilness will go away. All evilness is going to be gone, as that is the plan. The millennial age, there is no, there is no war, there is no famine, there is no disease, there is no sin that causes ailments and stuff like that. This is, it, it, it will be all removed during this tribulation period, during this seven years of tribulation. Men will come to the end of their own path and return along the same way, reaping the fruit of all they have sown. That is the only manner in which they would truly repent, for without recognizing their fault, they can do nothing to correct their errors. Yeah. So... Is this, uh, is this talking about reaping and sowing? Well, yeah, uh, we this is Judgment Day, and we've spent um, a lot of years sowing a lot of various different things. Um, uh, some of us have sown good seeds, you know, in our lifetimes, but you know, many of us, maybe even most of us, have done hurt, harm, hurt and harm to our neighbor and our and our um, and those around us. Well, it's these blemishes that's that we will have to to um, to remove, and we have to remove them personally. So, for instance, if if I have um, stolen something from you know somebody in the past, well, that deed has to be. I have to make it up myself. Um, that fault is is going to be made up myself, and that's what it's saying. Reaping the fruit of all they have sown. So it's a very personalized thing. This tribulation. We're going to have to reap what we've sown, what we've done. So individual. Individual, yeah. yeah. Ind each individual have to uh, reap their own. 
it's not really going to make a whole lot of sense to everybody because a lot of these things we don't remember we've done or we thought we got away with or we thought, the, you know, the father didn't see it or, you know, because it's been so many years since we've done that thing that it must not count anymore. Well, whether it was 10 years ago, 50 years ago, 500 years ago, that act is still, that stain has still got to be removed. 27. A new world is in preparation. The new generations are about to arrive. But before that occurs, it is necessary to separate the hungry wolves so that they do not prey on the sheep. See, he, he, he's planning on bringing his people here. And you know what he's always told them to be sheep amongst wolves. And they have always been like that. They've always been sheep amongst wolves. They they never were the cunning group. They you know you look at you know look at the books of Exodus and you know Judges and Kings and all of that. You see that the Lord's people were basically like sheep. They they had no protection other than the Father. And when they stepped out of His protection, they were pretty much on their own, uh, being subject to the wolves that wanted to do anything that they wanted to do with them, kill them, enslave them. You know, whatever they wanted to do with them. I think we're bombing them now. And and so what he's saying is before we are allowed to to enter this millennial age, before the next era really, you know, takes effect, he's gonna get rid of all of these wolves, all of these bad people that like taking prey on on innocent people or people that can't fight back, they're going to be gone. They're going to, they're going to be removed off the planet. And we're talking not only the warmongers, but we're talking about the um, the fanatical groups down at the church that you know are taking advantage of people down there. Um, people who are taking advantage of people through um, um, diseases and so-called cures for these diseases. All the hungry wolves are going away. Twenty-eight. An immaterial leprosy has extended throughout the earth. It eats away the hearts and destroys the faith and the virtue. Men are covered with spiritual rags. They know not, no one, men are covered with spiritual rags. They know not that no one is able to discover those miseries because human beings cannot see beyond what is physical. Yeah. So the this this spiritual leprosy, I don't know. You think about you know the, the leprosy of the old, where it kind of um, it was a material leprosy that ate away at your skin, um, actually chewed it away, destroyed um, the body. Yeah, right. It was, so, left you unclean. So now, if it's a spiritual leprosy, then it's eating away at our spirits. It's it you know we we are a three part being. We are mind body and spirit and the, the leprosy now is on our and on our spirit so what we what we have to do with that information is go back and look at you know how it was treated materially and make a connection between what we're supposed to do in a spiritual nature to cure our spiritual leprosy get rid of these spiritual rags it says they know that no one is able to discover their miseries because human beings cannot see beyond the physical yeah, so there's a lot of, this is talking about how a lot of us are walking around, we're in misery, we're in pain, we're in vices, but nobody can really tell. All we got to do is smile and put on a good show and everybody thinks everything is going well for us, when in fact it is not. People can't see past the physical, they can't see past what we show them. Right, that, that makes me think of um, when you see... Um, like different celebrities that have uh, committed suicide or mm -hmm. drug overdose or things of that nature and you say well they have it all I mean they got the looks they got the the riches they got the power they got the fame but as you said that you can't see those uh, the miseries of their spirits yeah all it took to get in those positions some of that will be weighing on their conscience and weighing on their minds and you can't you can't really see all of that. Right. Right. 29. But the hour of the conscious approaches. It is the same as if you would say that the day of the Lord or his judgment is about to take place. 
The shame will rise in some and remorse in others. Okay, now this is a big deal right here where he says the hour of the conscious approaches. Now this is talking about what's about to happen to this planet. There's a lot of stuff about to go on, but this is one of the big things. The hour of the conscious approaches. What it's talking about is that our conscious is going to become dominant in our life. Right now we can't hear our conscious. People say you're supposed to listen to your conscious. Well, try it. You know, if you, if you find yourself faced with, you know, uh, two paths, you're not sure which way, which which way to go, which way is right, which way is wrong. Try to try to see if your conscious will help you. In in the in the period where we live now, you can't really hear your conscious. But what's coming? He's saying the hour of the conscious approaches. This is going to become dominant in our life. We're going to be able to hear it, and it's going to be painful. It's going to be. It's going it, because it's going to weigh on. It's going to bring all of our all of our bad deeds to back to our light. And make us remember us, and make us put us in remembrance of those bad deeds, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be painful. It's gonna be like fire. Shame. Shame. Yeah, shame. Um, have, have you ever thought of something that you did long time ago in the past, and you know, find yourself remorseful for it, even though nobody knows that you did it, or or seemingly have gotten away with it, and nobody knows that you, you know, nobody knows that you're thinking about it now, but it's just bearing down on you, on you. That's your conscience. Even if you repent of it, you know, and you know that you've been forgiven, um, it still bears down on you. You're still shameful for it. You're still remorseful for it. And you, you're like, did I do this? Why did I do this? Yeah. So that bearing down on you a lot more times, like 20 times more, yeah, that will be painful. Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to be severe. This this whole conscious thing, when it becomes dominant, it's going to be severe. It's going to, it's going to be a big deal. 30. Those who listen to that inner voice, burning and inflexible, will feel within them a fire that devours, which exterminates and purifies. The sinner cannot resist that fire or justice or anything which is not pure. Only the spirit is able to resist it because he is endowed with a divine strength. Therefore, when he has passed through the fire of his conscience, he will have to come out cleansed. Of his errors. It is our conscience that's going to cl that's going to help cleanse us. There's going to be some physical stuff that we're going to find out later in this chapter that's going to help cleanse us too. But the conscience is going to be one of the things that's going to cleanse these stains away, along with pain, along with you know nuclear weapons. There's a lot of stuff that that we're going to go through. It's the purification of the earth. At the end of this thing, everything is going to every the whole planet is going to be purified. It's going to be cleansed. Not unlike Noah's flood, where all evil was just wiped off the planet. That's that's ex exactly what's about to happen now, except it's not going to happen through floodwaters. But how can you get people to believe this stuff? How can you get people to believe that that uh, we're going to be a part of this tribulation and that we're just not going to float off and nothing's going to happen to us, that we are going to have to be purified, that we are going to have to... Uh, be judged and you know for our, our previous sins and things of that nature most are not most people are not going to believe it until until it's too late you know so as far as the majority of humanity you remember revelation says let the wicked stay wicked let the just stay just there's really nothing you could do you can you can warn people but if you've ever tried you know that it's it's almost futile nobody really is listening nobody really is looking past, you know, the next, you know, uh, McDonald's sandwich or, you know, what's happening today. And the scripture says it's because they're not aware of the word. If they had read his the scripture, they would know what's coming. But because they haven't read what's actually in the Bible, and I'm talking, I'm talking even the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug, who is preaching every Sunday, has not read what's actually in there. And it's because he hasn't read what's in there that he doesn't see what's coming and he's not he's not he's not gonna get it. He's not gonna get it. You know? It, you So how do you convince him? You don't. You don't convince him. It is that hour of justice that's gonna do the convincing. All the pain caused by men will be brought together in one single cup, which would be drunk by those who originally caused it. And those who have never been moved by pain will tremble in spirit and flesh. Okay. Now, 
like I was talking about, or this is a this these judgments are specific to us. All that's about to happen is going to be the result of what we've done. Now, I know I know I've been a bad guy all of my life. I look, I mean, all of my lives. I look at this life that I'm living in now, and I'm I'm looking. And I'm thinking, well, this must be the best life that I've ever lived because in this lifetime, I have the scripture, I'm reading it, I'm, you know, working to obey everything as much as I possibly can. So, you know, it would have to be better than the previous lifetimes where I didn't have scripture, didn't have laws, didn't have, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. And I could imagine all of the stuff that I've done in those previous lives. Well, whatever it is that's done. Whatever it is that I've done, you can, you can start tallying them up. Maybe I murdered somebody in one lifetime. Maybe, you know, uh, you know, did some horrible stuff. All of that stuff is, is going to come back on me in this judgment day. Whatever it is, is going to come back on me in this judgment day. I'm going to have to drink it all down this time now. In one single cup. In one, yeah, well, the thing, what it's talking about there is not only my cup, but your cup. The neighbor's cup, right. mama's cup, every, everybody's cup. Everybody's going to be drinking this cup at the same time. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going, you know, it's going to be, you know, all of us, all of us going to be drinking this cup of bitterness at the same time. What do you think about this part here? It says, and those who have never been moved by pain will tremble in spirit and flesh. Mm -hmm. Is that, I don't, I don't. I can under, those who have never been moved. You, is that talking about those who've had the good life all their life? That's what I'm thinking. Those who have never been moved by pain um, will trim. So, or is it just they're just going to be scared? All right, let's put this in the comments. Let's look at verse 31. Let's let's start using some hermeneutics and interpreting stuff because I don't really know what it means. Is it talking about they're only going to be scared? They're not going to feel a lot of physical plant pain. They're not going to feel a lot of the war and the disease and stuff, they're just going to be trembling in fear or something like that? I don't know. 32. It is necessary that for an instant the heavens be closed to all and that they reopen only when the earth comes up one single cry, recognizing that the Father of all beings is one only. <laughs> and, you know, when I look at the Father's plan, and, you know, and only in hindsight, when I look at it, they say, you know what? That's exactly the way I would have did it. I would have did it just like that. Now, here you have in verse 32, what he's talking about is how heaven is going to be shut. You've read the same thing in Revelations where right. he says heaven will be closed for half an hour. Mm -hmm. Well, the plan is, is that at some period, it's going to, heaven is going to be closed. Things are going to progressively get worse. Be, things are going to be progressively getting worse. Day to day, we're going to find more news from Russia, more news from China, more news from the Philippines and these volcanoes and these earthquakes. It's just going to keep getting worse and worse. Fires and all kinds of stuff going on as this world goes completely crazy. Well, at one point, heaven is going to be shut, which to me sounds like our prayers is not going to be answered, you know? Yeah, from what we're listening to this morning about uh, heaven being um, inwardly. Uh, and you know your conscience and your, your your spiritual things that yeah your prayers won't get answered you won't hear from uh, the father you know even now we seem we seem to um, you know we can hear I guess we could hear somewhat you know from him Fleeting, where, yeah. yeah well you won't you won't hear nothing you won't feel nothing nothing happens and, but the thing about it, the world is going to be in so much torment and so much pain that people are going to be screaming for help. Mm -hmm. Father, Father, help me, help me. Look at this. All this is going on. Look, look, help me, help me, Father. But he's going to be shut. He's going to turn his face. Yeah. But the, face. But his plan is, but if you look at this, his plan is, is that, okay, a bunch of people will be removed. The only people that's left, every person on the planet is going to be screaming for his help. Everybody. At this point. That's what it means by that one single cry. We're all going to be yelling. Even the atheists? They're going to either be dead or converted. They're going to be dead and gone off the planet. Or they're going to have been converted over and say, oh yeah, I do now believe there is a father and I need his help. Everybody on the planet, everybody that's left on the planet... Is going to be screaming for the Father's help. 
and that's when he's going to come. That's when. That's why they say nobody knows the day or the hour because you're going to be screaming every day and every hour until he gets here. And it's like, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? People, oh, he's going he to be here. You know, he's going to be here. And, he, you know, it's, he's going to be here at the appointed time. Only, when, you know, when, when heaven is going to open back up. But the thing that I find amazing is how every everybody's going to be yelling at the same time. He's going to let everybody yell at the same time for his help. It's like y'all you want to deny him and play crazy and some of y'all acting like he don't exist. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. No, everybody on the planet is going to be saying, help me. He, everybody on the planet is going to be in desire to have his presence there, not just, you know, acting or putting on a show or, you know, we're going to, you know, be nice for a few minutes. As soon as we get this truck up off of us, we're going to go back to being evil. No, at that time, the world is going to be ready for him, for his millennial reign, for him to come down and be our king for the rest of the for the rest of the time we're on this planet. That just makes me think that there's going to be so much turmoil. You know, in Revelation, it talks about how there will be um, gnashing of teeth and all this other stuff. And, you know, it gives us a hint of the things to come. But, yeah. Oh, this is the Third Testament, chapter 55. You're going to get more than a hint. 33. I'll tell you truly, I shall submit this fratricidal and selfish world to judgment. And I shall purify it until I see that love and light spring forth from it. And that those who today lead their people to the abyss, those who today sow and propagate vices, those who have created a reign of injustice, shall be to those to whom I give it to battle the temptations, destroy the perversities, and uproot the tree of evil. Tree of evil. Yeah. So, and you can start to see how this this tree is going. This tree of evil is going to be uprooted. So here you are. You you've been the or I've been the person who have propagated the vi propagated vices or uh, you know what does it say created a reign of injustice and all of that. I've been the person who's laid down these these filthy stains on the earth. All of the things, excuse me, all of this is going to be put back on me. Those things, this reign of injustice. Is now going to be put back on me to the point where I'm feeling I'm feeling the end result of it. And then either, you know, I'm purified here on this earth through enough pain and, and turmoil that, you know, I'm actually able to wash away or I'm dead. Either way. It's gone. Either way, all of this, all of this, this, this evilness that's been going on. Is, is gone away, taken away with the same people that did it. And, and if you, when you think, I'm, I've been thinking about it, I could almost see this tree coming up and actually, you know, being uprooted because of how, I don't know how to explain it, how, how the person who did it is the one who's getting it back. I don't know if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. I, I was just thinking about how, um, you were saying you either dead or you know you're gonna have to face this here, and I'm like, well, I think I would rather be dead. But the thing about it, I remember that in Revelations it talked about how people are going to want to die, but death is like gonna flee from them. They're yeah. not gonna be able to die, so yeah. you're gonna have to face it regardless. Yeah. Thirty-four, man making use of his free will, has so twisted the role as to forget from whom he originated and has gone to the extreme of considering virtue, love, goodness, peace, and brotherhood to be alien to his nature while seeing selfishness, vice, and sin as completely natural and legitimate. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> I mean, we act like now we're not supposed to do anything for anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, that's true. It, if, if you see a person that's acting halfway decent, having love, virtue, uh, peace, or uh, charity toward their brother, mention it to them. Say, man, you know, you are a generous person. I appreciate that. And watch them next week <laughs> change. <laughs> I'm serious. The next time you see them, it's like, they, it's like you have offended them, and they're going to be like, uh-uh, I don't, I don't, uh-uh, I don't even, they do that. It's, it's alien to us. It seems strange to us. And take another, another case. If you actually go out here and try to show some of this love and goodness to your neighbor, 
he thinks you're trying to get something from him and it looks strange and it looks odd to him like you know like you can't be trusted you know I, I don't know how many times I've I've gone down and tried to help somebody you know and you know they rejected my help no I don't I don't need your food I don't I don't need a place to stay I don't need this and I don't need that and then you find them right back over with the bad guys that's you know that's all trying to be cunning and trying to take from one another it's like they feel more comfortable over in an environment where there is uh, distrust where there is vice and selfishness than they do feel in an environment where people are actually trying to you know show them brotherly love it's odd. It's really, really true. The more you think about it, it's really, really true. Yeah, I'm sitting over here thinking about it and, you know, just thinking about my life, how, yeah, yeah. if you, you do find it strange when people are actually nice to you. It's like they're being overly nice to you and you start thinking, you know, what's up? Why are you being nice to me? What's wrong with just a person being nice and wanting to be helpful? In today's society, we think that there's they're actually... Uh, what trying to get one over on you, or, yeah. or 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 something's up with it? Are they what they gay? They want me, and yeah. all you know, all this kind of trying silliness. Yeah, you. That's so why. it's 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 ridiculous that our nature has actually changed from being one of um, love, goodness, peace, and you know, just having brotherly love to that one of to a nature of, as he says, selfish in its vice and and sin. You know, we think we're supposed to think we're supposed to be evil. I think we're supposed to be evil. And 35. The new Sodom is all over the earth, and a new purification is necessary. The good seed shall be rescued, and with it a new humanity will be formed. My seed shall fall upon fertile soil, watered by the tears of repentance, and it shall grow in the hearts of future generations that know how to offer the Lord a higher worship. Yeah, see, we're about to be purified, like, and that's what the the title of this chapter is about the purification of the earth. But that's what's that's what's going on. I ain't gonna say about to happen. It's actually already started. The earth is being purified, and what he says, but he's making a way for his new seed, for his seed. These are going to be the people who love him. This is going to be a different kind of people that you see here on the earth. They're not going to be selfish. They're not going to be rebels. They're not going to be disobedient and you know they're actually going to be the people that we should be people that's loving each other people that's loving the father people that's obedient to what his word says and you know that's that's where that's where we're moving to here right like you said the whole the, the new Sodom is all over the earth now it ain't just one little town that's going to be destroyed with fire and brimstone the whole earth is going to be purified I shall permit the hand of man to carry out destruction, death, and war, but only to a certain point. Beyond that limit, the depravity, the obfuscation, and the ambition of men shall not pass. Meaning he's not going to let us just kill each other all the way, all the way out. These nuclear bombs, we've heard this since, you know, even you and I were in school, that they have enough of them to destroy the planet over and over and over again. You know, the, the scenario was, is that, one would shoot first, either we would shoot at them or they would shoot at us. But by the time, you know, the other guy retaliation shoots his weapons, his nuclear weapons, we're going to destroy the planet. And that's what he's saying here is that he's only, only going to allow man to do so much before before he stops him. <laughs> but the thing about it, it, the way they get stopped is tough, too, because then you're talking about the earth rising up. Earth, the earth is, and we're going to find this out in this chapter, but the earth is what's going to prove to man that his weapons are inferior. So you could imagine the earth battling against, you know, Russia and the United States with all of their nuclear weapons. This is going to be a serious battle. Mm -hmm. yeah. 37. That is when my scythe shall come and with wisdom reap according to my will. For my scythe is of life, of love, and of true justice. But as for you people, pray and keep vigil. Yeah. So a lot of people, his scythe, that's a lot of people about to go away. That's, a, that's the harvest. That's, that's multitudes and multitudes of people whose material flame will be extinguished and they will be thrust into the spirit world where they will dwell there until they're allowed to come back to the earth 
in this millennial age and and live in peace and harmony with the earth. But he's saying that his his life is, is his sight is precise, meaning it's going to go for the exact people that need that. You know, it's not going to it's going to seem like it's wide sweeping because the way he's clustered spirits into different areas and different countries the whole country is going to be annihilated but you can be sure that he's touched every spirit that was supposed to be touched and none of them that weren't no no nobody who weren't, weren't supposed to be harmed will be harmed in this thing don't think you're going to be escaped don't think you're going to escape because we all have errors and sins that we have to be have to be have to be removed so that's like you were saying earlier we, we we ask for forgiveness and and we think that that's it that's not it you know just like the child when the child comes and say mama mama i did this thing will you please forgive me yeah i still i will forgive you but you still gonna get a spanking mm -hmm. you still gonna get a whooping i'm not gonna hold you against you i love you come give me a hug but bring the belt with you because you about to get some licks for that thing you just did and that's that's where that's where we are now although we we feel like we've been forgiven we feel like we've been repenting that we've re that we've repented of this thing, but we are unaware of the fact that we still got to make it right. We still got to fix it. Right, because as a parent, you say, because I told you not to do it, and him telling us not to do it is his word. Yeah. He gives us the instructions where he told us not to do it, yet we still did it. Yeah, we're gonna have to. You're gonna have to uh, be punished for it. Yeah, you're still gonna be punished. Thirty-eight. Yesterday the earth was a veil of tears. Now it is a valley of blood. Tomorrow, what shall it be? A field of smoke and ruins over which pass the flames of justice, exterminating sin and striking down the pride of loveless men because they have forgotten the spirit. See, you need to go to the movies like the Book of Elijah, Book of Eli. What was that movie with Tina Turner? I don't want to get into you know too too much uh, idolatry. What was that? Well, she said we don't need another hero. What was that movie? Uh oh, I know what you're saying, but I can't think of with her and Honest. Is it Honest Wilson? Yeah, I don't know. Conan. Or something? But the, those are post-apocalyptic um, uh, visions of what we expect this Earth to look like. The remember the movie The Matrix. And, it, and, you know, when he was showing him what the earth really looked like and it was this, a destroyed mm -hmm. mess, that's where we're going. That's what the planet is going to look like. All of those, those post-apocalyptic uh, movies and shows are trying to show you what this earth is going to look like after we finish destroying it. After we finish blowing it up, uh, tearing it up, after we finish, you know, bombing it, doing all of this. And then after the earth has its part with the, earth, with the volcanoes and the earthquakes... This place is not going to look anything to what it looks like now. It's going to be, uh, like you say right here, a field of smoking ruins over which pass the flames of justice, exterminating sin and striking down the pride of lawless men. That's that's what it's going to look like. It's gonna it's gonna it's it's gonna be pretty bad. So that's that's why now you know I, I'm often saddened when I go out and outside and I look at how beautiful this world is. You know, trees and birds and everything's happy and you know what I'm saying? When I know what's coming to it, it's going to be all destroyed. It's going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. 39. And so the merchants of science will be driven from the temple of wisdom because they profane the truth and enrich themselves with the light. Yeah, so science, it, he... he the scientists, they, they, did it, they did themselves wrong, but they did us wrong too. It's like they took all of the, the knowledge that the father bestowed upon them and they used it for their greed. Instead of using it to help mankind, they used it for their greed. We had a discussion the other day. We was going to that little church thing and remember how I brought up, we was talking about diabetes. They're doing a diabetes thing down at the at the, uh, local, at the local church and they didn't have enough people so my wife volunteered to go down there and be a breathing body or whatever. And so I wanted to be nosy. And I was sitting in there and they're talking about, you know, all of these these pills and stuff that they're taking for diabetes in the church. And I bring up, well, what about, you know, the the foods that are supposed to, you know, help reduce the numbers? And, and you know, remember what they told me? Those foods weren't FDA approved. Right. right. Wait, 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 what? 
we're we're in here promoting pills, cumin and all this other, you know, diabetic stuff, really expensive mm-hmm. medicine. And when I bring up stuff that, stuff like figs and garlic, she, she quick to jump out. Well, not everybody, not everybody will accept it at the same time. It doesn't have the the same effect. Wait a minute, that pill does. The pill affects everybody the same, but the garlic doesn't. We can trust the pill to reduce the 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 diabetes. But we shouldn't have trust for the garlic because it's not FDA approved. Well, that's what our scientists did to us. Mm-hmm. That's that's what they did to us. Where in order to give your mother or my dad who suffers diabetes garlic, we have to get this thing FDA approved, which is going to require millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. They never really intended to help us at all. Right. Just talking about the, the man of science. And he's going to have to he's going to have to pay for that. Oh, he's going to pay. He's going to pay big. He's going to pay daily. 40. The great nations rise up proclaiming their might, menacing the world with their weapons and boasting of their intelligence with their science, not realizing how fragile is the false world they have created. For a small touch of my justice shall be sufficient to make that artificial world disappear. See, you got to understand that it's not only man and his little toys, but it's nature. See, going back, I don't know if I told this story in the first section about, you know, the story of Cain and Abel. When Cain buried Abel, the earth had a problem with it. The earth rose up. The earth spit that body back up on the ground and rejected it and would not let it not let it happen. The earth had a problem with that one single death. And so now we live here where, you know, there's, we're just killing people by the millions now. I heard somebody say 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 in an in a, in a article that at one point it was much easier to enslave a million people than it is to kill a million people. But where we at live at now, it's, a, it's infinitely easier to kill a million people than it is to enslave them. And we're killing them. We're, we are dropping bombs on these people right now. Mm-hmm. We're killing them, as you said previously, with medicine. Yeah, but we go and and so as we do this, the earth continues to 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 want its revenge. But you remember, um, in Revelations, the the Father has he's he's holding back all of the things that are supposed to happen to this earth. He's still holding the earth back, but he's going to unleash it. He's going to unleash those. He's going to unleash the elements. Not not he, not that he's going to put them on us. He's protecting us by holding them back. We have caused this on our own, mm-hmm. but at one point, it's it's like you're holding back the the big old you know the big old brute big fighting guy. At some point, you let him go. Mm-hmm. Well, when the father lets the earth go to come and get us, it's gonna rock this world. We're gonna find out here in a few in in any section here what's what's all about to happen to this planet. But we're talking about some severe some severe stuff, and what he and what that is, it's gonna prove to man that you know your your. What what you have done is is first of all wrong, insignificant, and you know futile. It, it, it's it's I'm not explaining. It's, what you have done has has significance. I mean, it's it's like you said, it's just not. It wasn't right. And as he said right here, um, it's a how small gradual, touch of my yeah. justice shall be sufficient to make that artificial world disappear. Yeah, you do not real, realize how fragile is this false world you have created. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It shall be the hand of man which destroys his own works. It shall be in his own mind that invents the means of exterminating what he first created. See, this is the part I want to get out. And I want to get this part out because we have to stop thinking that this is the father's vengeance on us the the reverend pastor deacon dr doug has always taught us mm-hmm. that the father that you know god was going to do this and god was going to do that you know he was going to bring down for it ain't him mm-hmm. it's us that's doing it uh, we have created this mess that's, that's happening to the world we can tell that but even the stuff that's going to be coming later is going to be the result of our actions you know, we can't just kill all of these people and expect nothing bad to happen. Something bad is about to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? And the thing about it, what he said, is he, he will allow the hand of man to destroy it. Yeah, we're going to nuke ourselves. We're going to blow our own stuff up. You know, and what we, we learned earlier is that 
he's going to just stop us from destroying it completely. We're, we're going to we're, we're, we're going to set off to destroy this planet completely annihilated with our nuclear weapons. But he's going to stop it. The father's going to stop and prevent us from going so far. But yet he's going to allow the elements to show us that, you know, it, our toys weren't nothing in the first place, our nuclear bat weapons. So what do you think about when you hear people say, oh, Father's not, uh, Lord ain't going to let him do, he only going to let him do so much. And, and he ain't, or, or they think they, uh, they can do something to us, but, you know, they ain't thinking about the Father. He got another plan for him. He ain't going to. He ain't going to let them touch us. He ain't going to let nothing happen to us. What do you well, think when you they, hear people they're, they're, say that? that? People have that feeling in, inside of them. And it's absolutely right. That, that, that the, the Father does have a plan. We're all going to end up. But the thing about it, what are the different aspects and the different stuff that you're going to have to go through? That's what we're not thinking about. Mm -hmm. You know, sure, we are going to be, be all right in the end. But that don't mean that you're not going to get your finger smashed. Mm -hmm. That don't mean that, you know, you're not going to, you know, get your leg blown off or, you know, suffer some strange ailment or disease that's going to be, you know, hurting you. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that don't mean that you're going to be protected from all of this. It, it really doesn't. Right, right. I mean, he says, even, even those that are obedient, strictly obedient, are going to suffer. Mm -hmm. You know, so those half-hearted want to be, you know, you know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus freaks, you know, <laughs> if they think they're going to escape everything, they're, they're wrong. We're all going to be purified. We're all going to be purified. Right. 42. I shall cause to re remain standing only those human works that have brought healthy fruits to men. So that they know, so that they may continue being cultivated for the good of future generations. All dedicated to perverse or selfish ends, however, shall be destroyed by the fire of my externable justice. Every building on this planet is going to be knocked down. Every building on this planet is going to be knocked down. Maybe destroyed and burned up by fire. I'm not sure, but he does say that he's that no stone will be standing on top of the other when it's over with. No. But, you know, there are some, what this verse 42 is saying, it, it looks like there are going to be some things that's going to stand, mm -hmm. you know, things that, that, that are used for benefit. I was trying to think of what kind of places would these be. It's definitely not going to be the churches. Well, you, you think about the hospital, but they're so... They're so corrupt as well. Everything is corrupt. I was Everything. thinking the hospitals are getting knocked down, orphanages. There, everything is just corrupt. Everything. Yeah. So, but he's saying that you know, if it ain't, if it's good for future generations, then it's somehow going to stand. So I guess we're going to know what's good at the end, huh? I guess so. Mm -hmm. Easy way to tell. When it's standing up. Yeah. When that building's still standing, there must be the good guys over there. <laughs> Forty-three. Upon the ruins created and destroyed by a materialistic humanity, a new world shall arise, whose foundations shall be inexperienced. And which will have as its purpose the ideal of spiritual elevation. Elevation, spiritual elevation. elevation. That, and so we're moving to be spiritual beings, and that's that's um that's what the father is 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 doing out of this. You, you got to think he, and we're about to wrap this up. But he's not creating all of the damage that's about to occur on the earth. Humans are doing that. Humans are the cause of all of these uh, tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanoes. It is us that is causing this. But the Father, in his infinite you know, wisdom, is using these experiences to spiritualize his people, to take us to the next step, to take us to the next part where the spiritual valley is going to descend down on earth. We're going to be aware of our conscience. We're going to be more aware of him. We're going to actually be able to hear his voice. We're going to be able to, you know, communicate with him, you know, uh, not like we, we can now where we can't hear him or we only hear him at certain times and we can't make out if it's him or not. Mm -hmm. All that has about to change. And it is because of these apocalyptic events that's going to help humanity to change and help pave the way for this new type of people that's going to live here and this new planet that we're going to live on. A new world shall arise, whose foundation shall be inexperienced, and which will have this purpose of ideal spiritual elevation.
I'm going to a new, it's going to, it's going to seem like a whole new planet. It's going to look different, smell different. Everything is going to be different. Different kind of people walking around the earth. Right now, the people walking around the earth are all about selfishness and greed and materialism. All that's going to be gone. You're going to have a whole new planet. A whole new earth. It's going to be, it's going to look pretty bad. We're going to have to bring out the brooms and sweep it up. <laughs> But all right, well, I guess we can end it on that one. We'll come back and uh, talking about apocalyptic wars, apocalyptic wars, wars, past plagues, and destruction. Sounds fun. Yeah, all the Revelation <laughs> stuff. It, this lines right up with Revelations, and, and 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 that's the beauty of it. It lines right up with Revelations. You can use this to fill in the blanks of Revelations. You know, and understand what's all about to happen. All right, so we're going to get right into it on verse 44. Anything else, Dave? That's it. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtues.